Hi, Lupe. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. Hello. So you speak French? No, I speak bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you right now? I'm in uh, Los Angeles. Okay, just a uh, uh, first question. How is the mood in Los Angeles right now? Um, it's pretty chill. It's pretty, uh, it's not a lot of, there's no like pandemonium or chaos in the streets. Um, people are, are pretty much, you, you definitely see uh, more people around on the, on driving um, simply because all the, the schools are closed. The, uh, a lot of the businesses closed yesterday and have been closing. So there's, I guess there's just more people at home. Um, yeah. but it's not a lot of people in the streets. No. And I live in a quiet neighborhood anyway. Yeah. Um, but there's not a lot of people just out in the city. Still, it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like a lot has changed, but you definitely yeah. can sense that more people are kind of like, like staying close to home. Because you know what, what when, uh, the, the footage and the, 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 the what we see in France is, uh, uh the shop of, with people who, who, who are trying to buy guns. Hmm. Yeah. Is it yeah. true? Yeah. Um, so what you have now is people, you have lines at the supermarket. Um, you'll have lines at, a, at a, uh, like Costco. I don't know if y'all have the same thing like Costco over there, just a big yeah, yeah. Uh, surplus store. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and you, you see lines at the gun store. You know, people are uh, uh, buying probably ammunition and maybe different supplies. And, you know, some people trying to get guns. Uh, in 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 Los in California, um, the gun laws are, are are some of the strictest in America. They're some of the strictest in the country, um, where it takes uh, 30 days to get a pistol, um, and about 10 days to get a rifle. Um, and to get a pistol, you have to take a test. Um, so even though you see a ton of people standing in line um, to get guns, so to speak. Yeah. Um, a lot of those people probably won't get guns um, and they might just be going there to get ammunition or some other type of supplies because gun stores sell more than just guns. So it might be, you know, different things. How do you um, explain it, that reflex? How do you explain that when there is a, a, this, this historical moment in the world where the world needs like more humanity, more, more careful, people are going to buy guns? Um, I mean, because crime is also a reality. In Los Angeles and in America, um, there are people that will take advantage of this um, to either you see it with people selling masks or or reselling toilet paper or people buying things in bulk. They just they just uh, arrested it. Or I don't know if they'd arrested them, but they just found out a few few people who are driving from state to state, buying up all the hand sanitizer, buying up all the toilet paper and then turning around and jacking up the price. You know, so I don't I don't think that's worthy of shooting someone, but I think people are aware that there's crime in America, uh, that that break ins and things like that happen. And as think as people start to think like getting prepared, okay, I have food, I have basic medical and necessities. Um, what am I going to defend myself with, you know, just in case somebody takes this advantage, you know, to come in and try to steal something or somebody who does who hasn't prepared um, wants to kind of take what I have. So, you know, it. I don't think nope, nothing's worth dying over, you know, but again, the mentality uh, for some people in America is that they're aware that there's a possibility that can happen. And it happens, unfortunately, you know, those gun stores are there for a reason. Um, and okay. majority of people who buy guns in America are actually legal gun owners. They'll never use it in any way. It's more for home protection. So, I mean, it, it's a given in times of crisis, people go for protection. Let me talk one second in French to the people who are watching in, in, in France. Uh, les amis qui travaillent chez Click, vraiment, je vous jure, euh, euh, laissez un peu euh, les gens nous aider à traduire pour ceux qui comprennent pas. Les vannes, c'est super cool, on n'en fera pas après. Là, on a Lupe Piasco qui prend du temps pour nous. Donc, si vous pouvez nous aider à traduire en temps réel, euh, je suis sûr que dans la communauté, il y a des gens qui sont meilleurs que, que l'Elysée. Uh, Lupe, we are talking each other because we are the friend in common. And, uh, which is, uh, is uh, we, we, we're going to call him Jay, uh, which has yeah, Jay. The, 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 the coronavirus. Uh, yeah. He wants to stay anonymous. Uh, he's the same age than you and me. Uh, mm. How can you uh, tell to the youth that it, it can happen to everybody? Um, I mean, you just said it. It can happen to everyone, you know, and you could be in a situation where 
you might be just in a in a crowd of people for a couple seconds, you know, um, and someone coughs or breathes or talks to your face very, very innocently. Um, and that interaction is enough for you to catch it. You know, you don't have to be sitting around someone for a few days or a few hours and they have to breathe on you or spit on you or anything like that. It, it really can happen in kind of an instant. Um, and yes, there are uh, young folks who who may not who may not have symptom symptoms, you know, or the symptoms might be mild um, or they might not have any symptoms at all, but they still could be carrying it, you know, and still give it to somebody who have like crazy symptoms. And you don't have to be an older person. um uh, to get sick from it and have very bad symptoms. If you have asthma or bronchitis or any type of underlying medical condition, respiratory condition, and you catch this virus, um, the virus will accelerate those conditions and it could lead to something that's fatal. Um, or if you're susceptible to things like uh, 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 having a low immune system, um, you know, you can catch pneumonia very fast. You won't die. You won't get sick from the virus. You'll get sick from the bacteria, you know, that the virus kind of allows to spread around. So I think people should take it very serious. There's the, the, the case of that coach in Spain, the soccer, the football coach who died and he was 21 years old, you know? Um, so if the, if, if the conditions are right, you know, for you to catch it and then it complicates into something even worse, I think you should take all of the uh, the, the proper uh, steps to guard against that, not only for you, but also for your family. I mean, you could take this home. Uh, you could be out in the park playing or go to the, the arcade or wherever. To I know a lot of stuff is closed now, so you don't really have a choice. But just even when this is over, you know, um, or even if you plan on breaking the curfew or breaking out of it, um, think that it's very real for a lot of people that are very close to you and it can happen really fast. And uh, uh, Lupe Fiasco, uh, you're in Los Angeles. I'm in Paris. Uh, are you scared? Um, no, I'm not scared of the disease at all, to be honest. Um, the, the, the disease doesn't scare me. Um, um, what scares me is people's reaction to it. You know, like I think that's more scary. Uh, I think in, in America, in the USA, in Los Angeles specific, especially California where I am, um, people are responding well to, you know, stay home. You know, people are responding well to some of the orders for the most part. Um, so um, the chances of catching the disease, of course, are really high, of course. But, you know, I don't feel like, you know, as, I feel like as long as I stick to what the program is and what the CDC says and what some of the orders that are being given out, then I, I feel safe about that. But I, I am still kind of on guard about people's reaction to it. So people can't overreact. Um, uh, people can kind of, you know, do things that are above and beyond the call of safety, you know? So, but I'm not really afraid, you know, to be honest. I, I think if you ask the average person on the street, you know, even though they shouldn't be on the streets, but if you just ask the average person, I don't think they're really afraid for themselves, but I am worried about like my mother, you know? Yeah. I'm worried about my older, the old, my older yeah. uh, elders, not just so my do mom. I, I'm, I'm scared about my mother and my grandmother. My next, my next door neighbors, I'm worried about. So I'm kind of like keeping an eye on certain things and just making sure um, that if they need anything um, and that they're following kind of like the proper protocols and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's more for the, for, again, for the older folks that I'm kind of worried about. Um, but again, as long as everybody kind of sticks to staying at home, uh, type eighth is what we say, like take your punk ass home. <laughs> if, as long as everybody's like kind of sticking to that. I think for the most part, everybody feels safe, at least until we figure out what's going on. You know, we, we, we don't know how the disease is working. We don't know how it's mutating. We waiting on the vaccine, all these different things. So as long as we're waiting and everybody's kind of keeping safe, I think we should be good. What can you say about Donald Trump? Um, <laughs> there's not enough time on Instagram <laughs> to go into <laughs> what I think about him. Your, your, your love is enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wish, but even with that said, underneath Trump, Luckily, the head of the CDC um, and there's the, a lot of the governors and mayors of the different cities and the different states and the different towns are actually being very responsible. Um, they're actually being very uh, proactive and making sure that their cities and towns are safe um, and making sure that the people in the community are fully informed. Um, so when you look at on a local level ab below Trump, um, you actually see a lot of the politicians uh, stepping up to the task and doing what's right, you know, for the community. So, you know, Donald Trump aside, 
you know, everybody else underneath him for the most part, even the Republicans, you know, people are, are, are um, kind of doing the right thing. So can we talk about music? Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about some music. Uh, I saw that your next show are canceled. Yeah. My, my, every, everything's canceled. So every, uh, 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 all of the big, uh, like live nation, AEG, um, a lot of the big, uh, concert production companies and tour promoters, uh, they just kind of shut down. So when they're shut down, there's no show. So nobody's touring. Um, there's, there's, uh, bands on, on public gatherings above 50 people. Um, in some places, uh, they don't want you to be around more than 10 people at a time. So, you know, any kind of concert or event on any level is canceled. So all my shows are canceled or postponed, uh, to the summer. So I had a European concert coming, uh, tour coming up in, in the summer. Um, so hopefully a lot of that stuff will, next two months, we'll get through a lot of this stuff and be able to go back on the road and, uh, make money. But until then, we're just, you know, staying in the house like everybody else. And are you writing new bars? Yeah, I'm writing some bars. I'm, I'm, you know, taking this time to be creative, you know, taking this time to write some raps, get some music from my friends, um, and, you know, kind of document this experience. I think you're going to see a lot of music come out the other side of this that is going to be very powerful and very insightful and very reflective. So there's a lot of artists kind of sitting around with the time to think. And I think you're going to see some beautiful music uh, come out of uh, this coronavirus situation. Do you receive a lot of beats from uh, beat makers, producers? Um, yeah, yes and no. I'm, I, I work with my own team closely and I only reach out to them when I really have a, a good idea of what I want. Um, but yeah, I'll get beats from different people uh, around the world, actually, who'll send me little beat tapes and links and stuff like that. And I listen, but unless I'm really working on a project, I don't really ask for music. Yeah. And last question, uh, hope we're going to talk, uh, for in, in the real life and that maybe we're going to touch and shake the hands, but right yeah. now it's, <laughs> it's not the purpose. So it, it's a crazy sentence, but we were not allowed to shake the hands. I hope that we could do it. What is your definition of a click? Definition of a click? Yeah. Um, definition of a click is a, a group of value adding um, individuals, but individuals who are masters of a specific craft and a specific part of the craft in their own way. And you all kind of combine to make something great. You know, like I think to me, the, op the best click to have is everybody's master at a different thing. And then when it's time to come together, you're able to create like something amazing. Yeah. So I think click is. Thank you very much, Lupe Fiasco. Appreciate you, brother. Be Say safe. Say hi yeah. to Los Angeles and to our friend Jay, okay? Most definitely. Perry, yeah. uh, be well. Love y'all. <laughs> I'll see y'all. Merci beaucoup. Peace. Azulu, c'est funky. Bye.